Heavenly Father, uh, you know, good morning. It's uh, it's good to be able to get together at least uh, on uh, on Zoom. Father, today is uh, is Mother's Day, so Father, want to uh, you know lift up and uh, and thank all the mothers that are out there. Mm-hmm. It is one thing that we all have in common. We all have a mother. Um, so Father, uh, you know whether they're still with us or whether they've they've, they've passed on to uh, to something different. <laughs> Father, it's uh, just thank you for those people who are so formative in our lives. Mm-hmm. Father, I pray that you give, um, you know, Greg, the right words as we go through uh, the Lord's Prayer and, uh, and how to pray for uh, your kingdom to come. Father, in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 So I, like, what did, I, I like this chapter. What else did people just, you know, in general, what did people think about this chapter? More practical, less practical, totally different, same thing? What do people think for a minute before we get into it? Much more dangerous. You got to be careful what you pray for. <laughs> you, might, you never know when your prayers are going to be answered. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Choose your way. Yeah. Be careful, careful what you ask for. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, I'll certainly say that it seems like, you know, it was a good conclusion to things. You know, it's trying to bring a lot of this home that we've been reading through. Yeah. Agreed. In some ways, I thought it was the easiest chapter. It was really um, straightforward, um, and and was I just thought it was it was like super straightforward. A lot of it I found really true that it's easier to pray it pray the quote unquote Lord, Lord's prayer backwards instead of forwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was um, really good points about. Um, just more, I, I've personally been thinking a lot more about um, God help me understand your character and who you are at least a little better. I know I'll never have a true understanding um, because I can't comprehend, you know, the, the, how, how big God is for lack of a better way of saying it. But um, uh, so, so I thought this was really um, an easier chapter in some ways, but uh, a chapter that um, makes me think, okay, so what am I going to do next to understand God a little better and to be able to pray, you know, hey, God, help me to be a part of the kingdom and help me understand who you are better. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I think for me, um, it, it was somewhat of an awakening. Um, it was really good. And even um, I found myself even reframing my prayers now. Um, I know that we tend to, what what I guess I didn't consider my prayers selfish, um, but uh, they, they were basically what I wanted and what I felt like should happen and would be the best thing um, with not necessarily completely... Um, allowing room for God's, um, for his, his judgment and his management of a situation or a person's life. Uh, I did find myself praying that, you know, th- this is what uh, I would like, dear God, but uh, according to your will, and I just found, found myself thinking differently. Um, it gave me more of an understanding that that God is in control. He knows the, the future and, um, you know, whatever, whatever your will is. I, I just, it gave me a, a more of a sober judgment, a sober mindset, um, as far as my, my prayers are concerned. Hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Yes. Can you guys hear Bernice? Your prayer. So if you go through the 
can hear that? Not fully. Basically, uh, Bernice was saying that she's gone through different uh, options as far as the Lord's Prayer and as far as how it's broken down. And the thing that she learned most was to pause. Uh, is it praise? Is that what you said, Bernice? Yes, praise. Pause, praise, and then pray. Hmm. And that helped her to focus more on God rather than her needs. So, mm -hmm. good, good practical. For the questions, how close, let's get into the first question. Um, how close to the author's prayer on page 154 have your prayers been? That's the one that kind of starts out with the paraphrase of, you know, God, you know, please forgive me, please forgive my sin and take me to heaven forever. And by the way, help me stop sinning. Oh God, thank you for showing me how to live. Help me to do it. Oh God, please give me enough food so I can at least feed my family. Oh God, please bring justice to your world, which needs it so badly. Oh God, please heal Annie, Ben, Carolyn, David, Eleanor, and Frank, and so on. How close do your prayers have that, you know, have, have your prayers been to that? Personally, I always start out with the Lord's Prayer first, and then I might add like the second one and then the first one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think for, for me, it's been pretty close, except the the take me to heaven. Honestly, I don't think enough about heaven. So I, that's something, you know, that I need to do more in, in all my prayers. But a lot of it was kind of the, you know, not, not certainly not the focusing on God and, and his majesty piece of it. Who else? Someone once taught me about praying using acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, vacation. And, and I try to organize my prayers like that when I, when I pray so that it is coming through the front door. But there are times when sometimes, you know, you're just kind of overwhelmed by a situation and you resort to the, oh God, help me. Yep. yep. Yeah. In general, I try to, try to do, um, that, that order, it trains your mind to praise God first before you start asking him for all the things that mm -hmm. in your heart. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I'm similar to, to Charlotte. I, I usually try to start out with, with just thanking God and, and, um, uh, in, in the, you know, in the mornings when I get up from my quiet times, if one of the first things out of my mouth is "Thank you, God, I'm I'm alive." You know, I'm still here. My family's still here, um, and and just you know, thanking Him for for life and and Jesus. But then I go on with, uh, of course, multiple requests. Sure. Um, so yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I do the thinking, but not as much of the, the adoration to begin with or the mm -hmm. praising him. That's yeah. where I fall short a lot of the time. I think everybody's kind of heard the phrase with them, which means what's in it for me. I know that's often because of our selfish nature. It's the first thing we think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're motivated to go ask for something. Yeah. Yeah, that's our motivation, certainly. Anyone else? All right, let's go on to the next one. Um, what pieces of the good news listed in each part of the prayer that he went through is what you prayed about the most? And then which of the, you know, he, he had like definitions of, you know, there were some types of good news that went along with the, the stanzas or phrases of the prayer, if you will. Which of those stuck out to you um, the most? You know, I came up with, I think, four pieces of good news that he listed to the different parts of the prayer. Which of those were, you know, struck you the most? Maybe it wasn't a very good question. Um, <laughs> no. Um, no, I asked for, for God to help me teach and learn how to bring heaven to earth amen it's a great prayer mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think for me, um, probably help <laughs> is the one that I may go to the most. I yeah. think the, the one that stood out to me most is probably, well, it's probably the first two. Honor and glory God to your name and heavenly father. I feel like those stick out to me most because like most people said in the, on the first question, like there are times when I start out at the front door first <laughs> and then there are times I start out at the back. Mm -hmm. But I feel maybe more refreshed and more at ease and more calm when I start out at the front door than starting in the back. Mm -hmm. So I think that stood out to me the most to remember to focus on the front door first and then everything else goes into order. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with what Andrea said. And um, I know for me, when um, I pray, a lot of it in some ways is get me out of this mess, but it's not just me. It's like, what's going on with the kids? What's going on with Greg? And, you know, God help make this, you know, um, what do you want? What's best? Please do what's best for them. Uh, um, it's get us all out of the mess, I guess is a better way of saying it. Um, but yeah, when it's, when I come in through um, what I would call panic mode of, oh my gosh, here's everything going on. Here's everything I, I need to ask God for help on. Um, it's not seeing God for me. It, then I don't see God for as big as he is and, and um, how all of these things are, are super minor to him and he already knows about it and he's got it covered um, and not see the character of God as much, um, that when I think more about who God is and, and um, you know, just like even just the vast world he created and, and things like that, that it helps go. So he created the whole world, um, getting Krista to Providence for her internship really isn't a big deal to him as far as how um, challenging it is for him to work it out. You know, for him, that's nothing. He created the entire universe. So that that so I agree totally with what Andrea was saying. It it helps me to um, be peaceful and more calm when I think about who God is first. Anyone else want to answer the, that one before we move on to the the next prayer? Next, I'm sorry, the next question. I, mean, I think for, for me it was probably the 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 good news of, of getting what I and others need. You know, I don't just pray for me, but there's a lot of, you know, God, please be with this and please be with that and please help. And you know, so, so it is the you know the the, the getting, you know, the, the, the asking for things is is certainly the the the, the most kind is the, the biggest part of you know the good news that I that I ask for the most, at least in my prayers, a lot of the time. Um, the next one, you know, have you, have you ever broken down the Lord's Prayer part by part? And I know some, you know, if those who have been around a while have heard it, you know, a couple of us have already shared different, um, you know, um, mnemonic devices to to help, you know, to help us figure out who the the um, like Bernice was saying the the the, the pause the pause, praise, pause, pray, or the, or the acts. Um, but, you know, how is the, was this section of the book different than, than the other ways that you've heard, either in a lesson or a book or whatever, um, breaking it down? Um, and, if, and if it was different than you've seen it, how do you see the prayer differently after reading this chapter than you did before? Or is this pretty similar to, to what you'd seen, to what you'd heard or seen or studied before? Well, I, so Bernice said it's basically the same uh, as what she said, um, except in a different form and reversed. Okay. It's pretty different if it's reversed, but okay. Same <laughs> pieces, different order. 
I think uh, for me, um, slightly different, and I think maybe relative to the um, adoration part, I had written down um, that for the starting point for all of uh, our, our prayers is, is worship and it's celebrating the worth of, of someone or the worth of God. And I think um, this really kind of brought home why the angels are, I used to always wonder when I read why, and it sounds silly, but, and I know that we should adore God and worship him. And but you read scriptures of how the angels are worshiping day and night and, and, you know, it, it was just hard for me to kind of internalize that. I, I, but but this this really helps because um, it helps me to understand uh, that uh, at least part of my prayer is worship and and celebrating the the worth or the worthiness of 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 God. And so I think that was uh, that was different for me. And I been saying the Lord's Prayer for a hundred years, but, you know, to break it down just definitely adds a whole new perspective. So this Sammy, is... Sammy's laughing at you, by the way. When you I know. I <laughs> hundred years. I got a quote yeah. Sammy right there. <laughs> Maybe not quite, but, but getting okay. there. So... <laughs> we understand. Amen. Yeah. Well, I know I was first studying the Bible, um, that was one of my assignments was to break down the Lord's Prayer. And mm -hmm. I did that. It's like, wow, you know, when I took it like word for word and described each word and what it means, I looked at the Lord's Prayer a whole lot different. I mean, I like Cordell has been saying it for a long time but they were just words back mm. then now there's meaning behind those words that's a good idea to have people who are studying the bible with look go through it that way I don't mm -hmm. that's a really good idea uh, I'll add something which is I think the um thought of it being you're walking in a, in a building backwards, you're walking in the wrong order because you're just looking for something to eat. I think that's actually a good one to kind of pull on this a bit. Certainly as you read the Lord's Prayer or even just as we do, I'll say just go to someone's home. A lot of times we don't necessarily have it right in the right order in our head because we've got to, I just want to go eat. That's all I'm here for. And uh, I think that, again, I've, I've heard a lot of this before where, you know, take it in the order that you see in the Lord's Prayer, that's the way you want to think. Uh, and I think the term, too, that's very hard for an average person to describe is what does worship really mean? You know, if I said I'm going to go worship, you know, Kevin, well, what would that mean? Do I just bring him flowers? What am I doing? <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we see pictures in the movie of someone worshiping someone, but what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Even when we say it's a worship service, well, does it mean I just sit around and sing songs? What does that mean? I think that's always the hard part to even put your fingers on it first, yeah. other than just really emotionally, mentally putting things in the right perspective to say, I didn't just come here to eat. That's not the purpose. There's more than that. Mm -hmm. What is hallowed? You know, what is hallowed ground? You know, what is, you know, what is that really, like you said, what does that really mean? What is it really, how do I do something with that? Even once I look it up in the dictionary, how do I, treat God as, as hallowed, as holy, and how do I really worship him? Yeah, good points. I like how that was described right there because like you, we mentioned coming to someone's house and it was talking in the book about coming through the kitchen, seeing all the food first and the layers of food and then you're kind of hungry, but you still kind of want to know how the house works. So you go to the front of the house and you find the head of the household who is God, who can explain <laughs> where everything is and how to get around. And, I, you know, you, you kind of find that sometimes when you go to someone's house, instead of going to where the food is, you want to go to the owner of the house and say, thank you for inviting me or thank you for opening up your house. And 
like we were talking about mm -hmm. if we were worshiping Kevin, <laughs> you want to go to Kevin and you want to talk to him first and then go explore his house. <laughs> it's not a matter of walking all around the house and dabbling in different stuff and then come back and say, oh, okay, appreciate it. <laughs> it's like putting God in his proper place at the front door. Well, if you go to someone's yes. wedding, how many people go to the wedding for the food? Mm. As opposed to just to honor the people there. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that depends on how close you are with the people. Right. <laughs> And, and how good the food is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like I learned that a, a while back too. I, I I link it towards spiritual stuff, but you know, you you want to feel like you did something before you grab a plate. <laughs> so like, even if I was just invited to a wedding or something like that, you know, I want to go and you know find somebody to serve <laughs> to feel like you at least earned your plate <laughs> and you earned your 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 opportunity mm -hmm. to eat something not just go for it well how many times oh, are we God. like little children where you know you you go to a party and and the kids just want to go find somebody to eat and you're like no 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 we've got to talk with people first mm -hmm. right yeah. i haven't experienced that one as much but i can see that <laughs> yeah yeah I really like how he gave the analogy of the house. I yeah. think it kind of helped yeah. bring it, bring the perspective um, mm -hmm. a little more clear to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I like how um, some of you just said been <clears throat> about, you know, in, in the book talked about too, like going to the head of the household first so that yeah. they can yeah. tell you how the house works. I mean, going to God first so that we can find out how everything is supposed to work and what the priorities are in the house and where things are laid out mm -hmm. will make navigating through the house depending on how big or small it is so much more easier Amen. than just you know mm -hmm. coming in through the back back door and having a whirlwind around the house and just i i and i, and I guess that kind of relates to prayer i think sometimes when i come in through the back door and i just ask for help i think my prayers are more like whirlwind and not focused <laughs> As opposed to when I start with God first, they're more focused, they're orderly, they're more clear-minded. You know, thank God that he can take our gibberish and understand what we want and need. But, you know, I just think that there is something important to having that that priority and that organization so that, you know, your prayers are not only, you know, clear, but refreshing to yourself. And, and then you have your priorities in order, like I was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, as I was going through and I just had to look back through my notes, I think that uh, a lot of us have something like the, you know, ACTS or something like that. So I think we kind of knew that we should start with the worship portion. Um, but I do think for me where it says, you know, here and now, may your kingdom come, may your will be done as in heaven, so on earth, which to me was something I think I knew, but I got a lot more insight which is we're trying to allow, allow God to work through us and our prayers are focused so that the kingdom is now on earth. You know, the things that are in heaven are now on earth. So, you know, the love, the compassion, all these kinds of things, all these, you know, godly qualities are now manifesting themselves on earth, which I think is, is, is definitely the way to go. Um, so I guess what I'm saying, it's not just a reorientation from it's all about me and starting in the wrong door, as opposed to coming to the, the guests of the house, but it's also who is, who is it for? Is the prayer just for me or is it for God? Is it me worshiping God? And, and with that, is it all about, you know, something being better or about his kingdom coming? So it's like a reorientation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on that one? I like how you Oh, go on. Was someone else saying something? I like how you talked about Jesus doing the good news that he was taught. You know, Jesus was feeding. Jesus was forgiving. I'd never really put those things together, you know, the, the, some of those parts of the Lord prayer that Jesus, you know, literally embodied or personified. Um, I'd never really seen that before, you know, and, and that's kind of what, what we're being called to do um, 
also. And, and for me, again, I've, I've heard this, at least pieces of it before, but I'd really gotten away from the, the praising God in the beginning. I'll start off with thanking him, but I don't start off with praising him enough and, and just, you know, thanking him for his qualities enough. And that's something that it really called me back to and how important that is to do um, before, before we get into everything else. So that was useful for me, certainly. Um, the, the, next the next question, how would you, you know, that there was a several pages devoted to the, the give us what we need now part of the prayer or the, um, you know, give us the bread that we need now part of the prayer. What parts of that, you know, how would you paraphrase that or, or, or what does that mean to you guys? I mean, because there can be lots of, a lot of parts to that. When you read that, when you think about that, what does it mean to you? Teach us what we need to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of that one. Good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think when, um, before I read this, I think I've always thought about, you know, your, your needs and wants, just, you know, earthly things. But then when I was reading this and it came to the daily bread I thought about Jesus being the daily bread and I thought about him being you know the juice and and the bread and and how he is our daily bread that we're supposed to feed on every day mm -hmm. I think I thought about it a little deeper like maybe it's about like really praying like I don't know, like somehow making Jesus a little bit more significant in that. Mm -hmm. And who else? There are several things he, he mentioned in there that I'd never thought of before. Anyone else? I think for, for me, it really was the... Um, you know, I mean, sometimes I took it pretty literally. It, it is meeting our physical needs, like bread. Right? It's really, you know, but and obviously it's broadly, it's it's anything that we, um, you know, th there really is a meal. You know, going back to the house analogy, there really is a meal set out. You know, we really are welcome to that meal. Um, but also, it, it the meal is is for everyone. You know, it, it's it's daily bread. It's it's my needs, but it's also praying, but it's also the needs of, of everyone else. You know, I can't just focus on my bread. Okay, thanks, God, I've got what I need. Move on to the next piece. But it really is the, um, you know, the, the, the our daily bread. What are those other needs that, that I can be, that I should be um, praying about? You know, who else can I be praying for help for? Um, it was the pieces that I saw. Anyone else on that one? on that one if we move on. Welcome. Do you have any thoughts on any of these? Uh yeah, sorry about that, man. I guess they're doing something for their mom here shortly. So um good for them. Yeah it is. I gotta change into a different sweater. But when I think of oh yeah for sure. <laughs> when, in the in the Which Lord's one? prayer when it says as you know, it says our daily bread, you know. It's, so I agree when you say it's more about, it's not just about my personal needs, but it's a, I would just say a communal need, I guess, you know. So, you know, when I pray, I do, you know, 
pray for others too, not just my needs are met, but you know, the needs of others. If I could do something to help someone else, help me to be a tool or a vessel to be able to meet that need. Amen. I'll, I'll just speak to the, uh, in page 160 at the bottom, it's just saying how, uh, you know, we, we see the good news meaning feeding the hungry and all that. Uh, but he's talking about, he says, yeah, this can, this can be for some a way of getting off the hook. Let's just do the practical bit. Don't bother yeah. about the spirituality, but the whole prayer resists that. Every bit needs every other bit. Yeah, I'd highlighted that too. I thought that was a good point. It's a piece. And then, you know, and, and God loves us. He, he is our father and he wants to give us what we need. He knows what we need. So it's not like we should ignore the, the daily bread, but it isn't, you know, it's not the most important part either. It's, it's tied in with everything else. And an old phrase that, that I saw earlier quoted talking about that there are no atheists in foxholes. That's a very old phrase, yeah. but it does, it is true. You know, if you're the window washer about ready to fall, you suddenly get religion. <laughs> yep. You know, yeah, and it's a lot of time where they do things. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, how do you see the Lord's Prayer? This is related, obviously, in, into what Steve just said. How do you see the Lord's Prayer taking us out of our needs and wants? How does reading it help you pray more God-centered prayers? I think we've talked, we've touched on this, you know, in, in a couple different ways previously. Um, how do people want, you know, does anyone have anything to add to what we've said before to that, taking it out of our needs and praying more God-centered prayers? I think it goes back to um, uh, what Kathy said about remembering like who God is first, like having that, having God be the center and starting out with praise and worship. And then you realize that he's going to take care of your needs and wants, like, you know, if, if they're his will. <laughs> and those are like little compared to the greatness of God and what he can do, what he has done, what he will do. Um, so I think, you know, keeping the prayers like focused on God and making him first in priority, it minimizes, um, I think the anxiety of our needs and wants on a daily basis. Um, so it, it, that's helpful for me to kind of remember that, you know, and again, I guess it goes back to what I was saying about, you know, being calmer when I put God in the forefront rather than in the back. Yep. Yep. Good point. Anyone else? One of the takeaways for me in this chapter was um, it's on page 169. It's that Praying in the right order allows us not only to know and believe the good news, but to become part of it ourselves. And that's anything I really ever thought about before. Mm -hmm. um, that we know that God wants to bring his love and purpose through us, but to think about when we pray our prayers in an order that honors God, that we actually become part of that, that good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was just um, a, another a nice way to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, I I just wanted to add with with Charlotte because I was reading uh, even just below that, uh, uh, similar to what she's saying, uh, where it says God has made human beings in the first place to reflect His image into the world. God wants to run his world to bring his love and wisdom and purposes to bear on the world through human beings. The foundation of the good news is that through Jesus, the ultimate human being, the true image bearer, the living God has done this once and for all. It has been done. It doesn't need to be done again. The world is a different place because mm -hmm. um, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think just in conjunction with, you know, with what she's saying, um, it, you know, reading, it, it just helps us to be, it, it has helped me to be more, 
to that he wants me to be a part of the good news. So um, it, it does give me a mindset of a, a more God, God-centered prayers. Um, so I, I found that very helpful. I highlighted that to remember. Yep, definitely. Yeah, and I left off the question. I don't know why. As I was reading through my questions and answering them, I realized I didn't like a couple of the questions very much. So sorry about that. But I mean, I did want to add on the next question once we get through these, you know, what can we do to, to be good news people? I definitely want to spend a few minutes talking about that because it is so important. So um, let's finish this question, then we can talk a little bit more about the broader being good news people. Anyone else on the, you know, helping this be less focused on us? I think for, for me, it was, you know, it, you know, uh, again, that it helps me to start with hallowing God, with praising God and asking to be used in his plans for the kingdom. I'm grateful that I can be a part of this kingdom. Again, that's the piece that I forget too easily. Um, and I really liked, I think someone meant, touched on this, um, you know, I need to keep remembering God's plans for me in the world and where it talks about that, you know, he translates all our hopes, longings, and desires, all the stuff I want to another plane entirely. You know, that, that it, again, it's the, it's the God, you know, maybe using what I want, but using me, you know, sometimes infrequently in ways differently than I, than I would, you know, than I would. You know, he talks about the telling people to look up beyond their concern beyond the way they thought everything ought to work out. You know, that's, you know, and that concern, I can give into that danger, certainly. And it really calls me, and I like the author's quote, it really talks about, you know, really calls us to think about what would, what would the world look like if God became king? You know, what does my, what should my life look like if I really allow God to be king of, you know, king of everything? You know, when you know, Jesus, we said Jesus is Lord at baptism. What does that look like? Um, that was a big piece. And then finally, the last question, you know, again, that wasn't on here, but should have been, you know, when we've all touched about it, what can we do to be good news people? You know, a million aspects to that. But when you read this, what really struck out to you as being, what can we do to be good news people? And I had it what you did too, Cordell. I think that it, <clears throat> it all starts with prayer. Like we can't do anything without God. Mm -hmm. In order to do his will, we have to be praying for his will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Who else? What can we do? As I'll just say that I think it's important to honor the, you know, we, we saw earlier in the book, it talks about the upstairs, downstairs thinking. I think a lot of times that is where we get caught in, which is, it's not right now. The, the good news isn't right now. It's somewhere else. It's heaven that we'll get to later. And so just never mind about right now, you know, just suffer through. As opposed to really being, feeling filled with that we're in the right place right now. Here's this is it. And it is good. And look for the good in it. I mean, it is at uh, times, I'll use the metaphor of we go out for walks and I'm always looking down at the sidewalk, praying that God will take me away from this place because of all the virus, because of all the whatever it is, as opposed to looking up at the sky, looking at the trees, looking at the beauty that's already been created and saying, this is God's, this is God's creation. This is the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more of just being that, you know, here we are. Yeah, we think we're in the United States being run by the government, so we get a little downtrodden, but it's no, maybe God's really running this place. Maybe we need to have that faith. Yeah, yeah definitely. Anyone else? Jana, what are your thoughts? You always have good thoughts on some of this. Yes, I had a lot of thoughts on this um, as I went through this because I focused more on my purpose here on earth. How do I fit into the creator's kingdom? And how do I live a life that others can want to know more about what they see in me that I can use that as an opportunity to spread the good news about Jesus? 
And so, um, you know, um, as a child, I basically always had to enter through the front door because my grandparents were salvation ominous and therefore we had to bring first God into our presence and really um, just reflect on how powerful he is and who he is and basically how he fits into our life even as children. And then we would go into the, you know, our Father who art in heaven, how would be thy name, etc., etc. So therefore, this entire lesson, and I just want to thank, you know, all who participated, and just to say how much the lesson has really impacted me, and basically has changed my life, because my focus now is truly on God's kingdom here on earth and how I can spread the good news. Um, so each aspect of this entire last chapter is for me what I really, really focused on as to my takeaway from this entire lesson. It's also, it was also good for me that I came to understand the backstory, the, you know, the, the resurrection and the death of Jesus Christ and how that actually fits into my life and how much the whole backstory coming to the death and resurrection has impacted my life so far. And to be able to ask myself, how do I really fit into God's kingdom today? What I have I personally done to project the good news? Am I holding back? Am I, as I, should, am I as bold as I should be about spreading the good news of God's kingdom here on earth? And so you can see I am very talky this, because this entire lesson has reflected on my heart in terms of basically where am I today? Because there are no other chances. This is it. Nope. This mm -hmm. is the only time I have left to really, really do what I have to do, you know, with my friends, with my own family, not being ashamed of spreading the gospel, but being as bold as Jesus was when he walked this earth. Amen. So I just thank you all. Amen. Thank you. Tammy or Gwen or Kevin, we haven't heard from you guys much. What are you, what are your thoughts on this? Certainly. Good stuff, Gwen. Thank you. Good Tammy, what are your thoughts? Um, I think that um, the, the Gospels are full of good news and um, that we have to recreate um, what they were doing at that time. Um, sp spreading the word. Um, and um, hospitality and um, like um, praying for, um, I, I mean, I feel weird about it, but praying for miracles um, 
for those that need something bigger to to see because they can still happen and um just not being afraid to do big things because god said that we could do even greater things than what were done before mm -hmm. um i don't i don't know mm, those are all good yeah those are excellent tammy Good stuff, Tammy. Mm -hmm. yep. Good job. What about you, Kevin? So the, um, you know, I, I do like his analogy of coming in the house through the back door, the front door. Um, and, you know, certainly I never thought of it that way. Um, but the, the, the Lord's Prayer was actually, you know, several years ago, and I said, this isn't what. I, you know, what these words say is not what I've been taught. Um, it was really kind of the, the opening for myself of, well, what else have I, you know, what other words have said something different than, than what I've been taught. Hmm. Um, so I, I think this, this is a great, uh, it, it actually is a chapter that probably should be chapter one and then the last, yeah. final chapter in the book, actually. Amen. Uh, yeah. So you can see how it develops, yeah. but um, I think this is a great place to, to leave it. Is that you know it, it's our role in the kingdom, and uh, you know that's what we're praying. Praying happens, you know, in this world. Um, so it's uh, you know th that's the point for me that actually kind of started raising a lot of questions in the past. So hmm. I'm very happy to be part of this because I think spreading that message will help um, help not only the church members, but the church generally. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. A lesson for, a lesson for everyone. So, um, do you want to say anything, Drew? And then finally, just to what, you know, we've got a few minutes left. What's been your favorite part of the book? You know, as we're looking back at the whole book, <sighs> you you know what was your favorite part what you know or, or your part that hit you the most or stuck out the most or really made you go hmm interesting uh, i'll speak to some of the things if i may um is i think that uh it focusing on the resurrection being a key piece that we again often get a little bit distracted from because we're you know we aren't we don't have that jewish backstory we weren't right there I think that's a very important piece to remind ourselves about how key that is. Yeah. Amen. I think yeah. for me, just a perspective that, you know, the, the kingdom is here and now, and we can be a part of it like right now, <laughs> I think which was a, it was a different viewpoint for me. I think we've, you know, are taught like heaven and we think about that, but we don't think about, God is transforming the earth like right now. So that was just really eye-opening and, and a new teaching <laughs> for me. <laughs> I want to be good news people. Because when we pray the prayer the right way, we become good news people. And the prayer means standing between the one true God and his world, and yeah. become a place where the love of this God and the life of this world are somehow held together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was powerful. On um, one six day, and the becoming the good news people. Yep. I think yeah. even even with that, like with prayer just being the key. It, I don't know, for me, it does like just put a whole new focus on prayer and um, just how much more important it is. And um, I don't know, I, I, it, it kind of brings to reminder like the all, like how, how amazing it is that God even hear our prayers. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's why they are important because he really does hear them because he's using them to transform like, the world. Mm -hmm. 
Who else? What were other people's favorite parts of the, of the book? What hit them? Um, just want to add, what really hit me again is the upstairs, downstairs story. I, it's like daily, that's that whole concept of the upstairs, downstairs has always just penetrated my mind. Um, if I don't pray, if, uh, if something goes wrong, I feel sometimes as if I am locked more too often in the, with the, in the downstairs world. And um, how important it is to realize that there is a God and he cannot be placed in the upstairs when it fits into my life that way, um, for whatever reason while I do whatever I think is necessary in the downstairs. So for me, I have continually gone back to that chapter that talks about leaving God on the upstairs, going up to tilt my hat when I think I need him, but living my downstairs life. Mm -hmm. Very impacting. And it's a story that I have been able to use in my day-to-day -day talk or life with others. Amen. I also like the uh, good news versus good advice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yep. I guess I'll, I'll build on what Janet said, which is I think that upstairs downstairs thing is very prevalent in the way we tend to think about things. And certainly if you're talking with somebody else, it's very easy to think that way. Um, I think that is uh, something when someone is delaying a decision or not taking care of things now, it is because of that. I'll just deal with it later or it'll get dealt with later. You yeah. Know, when I get to heaven, this will all clear up. I don't have to worry about it right now. Yeah. So kind of bringing that back to say, you know, understanding somebody is thinking that way, understanding when we're thinking that way, going, okay, you know, maybe I'm putting this off. Maybe I'm thinking about, well, when we get away from here, it'll all go away. As opposed to, no, this is now. This is God's kingdom's right here. You know, this is why whatever needs to happen now, because we're taking care of things now. We're part of we're part of it right now. It's not a delayed event, it's a it's a right now event. Right. I I know it it made the upstairs downstairs thing when I got to that that made me think of all the people in my life that's how they were thinking and that's not how I was taking it when I read the Bible I was not taking it the way they were saying because they were upstairs downstairs and I was now <laughs> I was thinking it's on me, and they were saying, no, you got to do this, 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 and this to go up to heaven, and I'm sitting there going, no, we're supposed to bring that down here, but I was only a kid, and I was told, you know, you don't understand, <laughs> whereas I find out that I was understanding, and they were upstairs, downstairs. And you were a wise kid then. <laughs> it, it, just, it just made me look at at those people as okay now i gotta help them to understand that i was right and and i have to help them bring heaven to us to earth so it just made me understand others better I think for me it was, I mean, just that that question, the you know, the original question he asked of what is the news and how is it good? You know, if the, if that that vision of God, you know, the the pagan guy who just demands a sacrifice, you know, and Jesus was that sacrifice and the demand for blood was filled, and you know, just kind of well, that's not good news at all. That you know, it, it really just made. Me, you know, just the, the original question really made me think, forced me to think I've used the word good news and used the word gospel, but what does it mean? 
how have I used it and, and what does it mean to others versus how am I using it? Has, what is, what, do I understand it right? Let alone what are all those other views in the world? Like people said, you know, the upstairs downstairs and the kind of the, you know, got, you know, the good news became kind of pagan again, which isn't good news at all to people. What part of that is, is good? If I'm sharing with someone, what am I sharing and how do they, how do they hear it and how do I share it? So it really is both news and good that it isn't just, yeah, I grew up with, you know, I have a lot of friends, they grew up religious, you know, they've heard enough and a lot of them somewhat legitimately, well, I don't really want any more of that. That's not good news at all. You know, the recovering Catholics, if you will, you know, that's not, you know, what I heard isn't very good. I don't want that. And I can't blame them when you look at it through that lens. So it really, you know, kind of to Joyce's point, you know, kind of, you know, help me understand others better and, and think through what can I do to, to help? What can I do to, um, to bring the, the, the good news, the real good news that the Bible talks about mm -hmm. uh, versus just the, what people grew up hearing or whatever. And it's like, well, I don't, you know, I can't blame them. I wouldn't really want that either when you look at it that way. Um, so that helped me. And then also close out and then we're, I'll ask uh, Ben to close out with a prayer. And then also the last take. Um, I was gonna say, it's just, it, I think what you were just saying reminds me that, you know, in order to share it, like a, a way to share it would be reminding people that it's, restorative, you know, this is a restorative relationship, which will bring about a transformation. And I think restorative, I think for me is a key word that can, uh, came out of this that I want to find a way like when I'm sharing with people to make sure I share with them about restoration, because that is the good news. Right. Amen. Yeah, as we're being transformed, we can transform as we're being healed we can heal, you know, bring God's healing here. And thank you all for joining. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's called me higher to, to, to co to co-lead with Kevin and, you know, really made me think about it more. And I appreciate that. So it's been good for me for that and, and enjoyable doing it. So thank you all for participating. Um, thank you, Atoma, for asking me to help lead it. And thank you. Appreciate that. Hopefully, we'll be able to do another book later this year or something like that. I don't know if it'll be Kevin and I or someone else, but I'm looking forward to more book discussions to, you know, make me think more. You know, force myself to examine what I've thought, what I've read, I've read. Kevin, do you want to say anything else? No, I appreciate everybody's participation. You know, similar to Greg, this was fun. Um, you know, it, yes, it's a lot of work, but actually, it was a lot of fun also. So, it doesn't seem like work. So appreciate the ability to share hearts with everybody amen let's go ahead and give them a round of applause guys Yay. <laughs> well thank you thank you thank you <laughs> then you want to close this out with a prayer when you're ready for church absolutely uh father in heaven thank you uh father we praise you because you're worthy and uh, god we're grateful that you love us for absolutely no reason at all god the way it may seem but um father for so many other reasons god and we're grateful god that, that you've given us some um, uh, perspective uh through the pages of this book through the heart of uh the man who wrote it and uh god thank you so much for allowing us to um uh, work through it together so we can uh learn new perspectives think of things in uh new ways and uh father have a, have a stronger hold on what we can do to affect your kingdom right here where we are and uh, as we walk through our daily lives. God, thank you for um, revealing to us the good news, uh, Father, revealing to us the depth of it. Because um, I think even seeing the joy of Jesus when he expresses the fact that you made these things known to who you desire to make them known to. And uh, God, and um, it's still a mystery to some others, God, but um, we pray, Father, that um, your ministry will continue to be revealed uh, right here on earth, God, as we prepare here to um, welcome you back, <laughs> uh, God, to welcome you back, uh, to, uh, to really just show us how, uh, how it's done. And uh, thank you so much, God, for your word. Please be with us for the remainder of the day, uh, Father, for our, our, our message to come, and uh, Father, uh, for the fellowship we have, and help us to 
uh, encourage our mothers if, if, if they're uh, with us, God, in some way, uh, Father, and help us to take care of those around us who we see as mothers too. God, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray in the spirit. Amen. 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 Thank happy, you. All. Happy, happy, happy Mother's birthday. Day to all the mothers in the earth, um, in the room. Happy Mother's thank Day. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.